when I play hockey, I'm a goalie. So I got my goalie glove here, quite worn, I know. And I got a hockey puck. So if we have a collision, the momentum prior to the collision equals the momentum after the collision. That's the conservation of momentum law. So if my glove is moving forward and the puck's coming in the opposite direction and they catch, the momentum will be matched when we figured it out. But this is what we call inelastic. Inelastic means at the end, they are one, they are together. All right? Well, that was our last video. Today's video is talking about inelastic. Think of my other glove. When the puck hits this, it just deflects off. This is in sorry, this is elastic. Elastic, you start with two things, you end with two things. Okay? It bounces off each other. When you have inelastic, when you have inelastic, you start with two, and at the end, they are all together as one. So as a refresher to video three, we've got a couple cars here. Uh, the one on the left is moving towards the center and the one on the right is moving towards the center. And that's before the collision. They both have momentum. And then after the collision, what we found was that the two cars, every question we did, the cars were stuck together. Maybe the bumpers of the car stuck together. Or if they're actually trains, trains have a little connector on them that, that'll, that'll snap in place. Okay? So that was inelastic. We didn't give a word to it, but that was inelastic. What we're looking at with this video is what we would call elastic. So the difference here is that after the collision, the cars are separate. They go on their own way. Now, once again, they might both move north. They might both move south. Or they might move in opposite directions. But what we need to figure out is that the momentum is conserved. So the amount of momentum that we had prior to the collision will exist again after the collision. Another type of problem that you might experience is maybe we've got uh, a cannon shooting a cannonball. Prior to the collision, the momentum here is zero. Neither one is moving. We'll get that cannonball gets stuffed inside the, uh, the barrel here. Neither one of them is moving. We light the gunpowder on fire. And what we think about is we think about that cannonball coming out of the barrel. But this cannonball now has momentum moving to the left. So to keep our conservation momentum law in place, what also happens is, is that the cannon moves to the right. And so we have this inelastic, sorry, this elastic collision going on. The two of them separate and the mo momentum uh, theories and the conservation momentum must be preserved. Next, we'll do a few examples. We have a mass of a cannonball, four kilograms, and it's fired south at a speed or a velocity of 60 meters per second, okay? And that's south. Uh, we have a cannon, and the cannon recoils at a rate of three meters per second to the north. So they're going in opposite directions, okay? But we don't know the mass, the mass of the, of the cannon itself. I'll use C over here for cannon and MB for the mass of the ball. Okay, so there's the information we have. Now there's some implied parts of this that uh, are maybe not obvious. So the momentum of the cannon, or a uh, momentum of the ball, so the ball first, the momentum of the ball before the cannon is fired is zero because we had a mass of four kilograms times zero meters per second. It was not moving prior to the firing of the cannon. The velocity, oh, sorry, I'm doing momentum. My apologies.
momentum of the ball and the momentum of the cannon. And the momentum of the cannon will be the same. They have the same uh, momentum initially because this has a mass that we don't know what it is times a velocity, but the velocity here was zero. So what we have is we have a kilograms meters per second and zero kilograms meters per second. So what do we do? Well, we need to figure out the momentum before the collision, the momentum before the collision. And so I'm looking at the total momentum is zero. Okay. We know that after the collision, the total momentum, remember this little symbol right here, means after, okay? And the momentum after has to equal the momentum before, okay? This is our conservation law. Those are the same. Conservation of momentum. Okay, very important. That's the whole concept right there. Okay, so we know that the total here has to equal zero. And since they're moving in opposite directions, okay, so the momentum of the cannon after the collision and the momentum of the ball after the collision has to equal zero. And because they're in opposite directions, remember we're going to subtract them because they're in opposite directions. So what we know is that the momentum of the cannonball after the collision equals the momentum of the uh, of the of the the ball equals the cannon. What do we know about the momentum of the cannon? Well it's equal to the mass of the cannon times the velocity of the cannon. And the, uh, the momentum of the ball is equal to the momentum of the ball after the collision times the velocity of the ball after the collision. And so this is a very fundamental equation right here. This, this is really important to realize because this is, this is going to be common in every one of these types of questions that we do like this. Um, so now, which one are we trying to solve for? We were asked to find the mass of the cannon. We want to know the mass of the cannon. So I would prefer that we do a little bit of algebra first, and, and uh, most students like to put the numbers in first, but the mass of the cannon equals the mass of the ball after the collision times the velocity of the ball after the collision divided by the velocity of the cannon. So there, I've got a nice tidy equation I can use. Um, what is the mass of the ball? I think the mass of the ball here was four kilograms. And it was moving at a speed or a velocity of 60 meters per second. I believe it's south. And then what we found was that the velocity of the cannon was three meters per second. I think that was north. It was the opposite direction. So that's going to give me 4 times 60 is 240. 240 divided by 3 is going to give me 80. Checking my units here. Let's see. I got kilograms on the top. I got meters per second divided by meters per second. Oh, I'm left with kilograms. That's good. So the mass of the cannon was 80 kilograms. We have a cart, we'll call it cart A. Cart A has a mass of 1.5 kilograms. We'll call that A, we'll call that one B. And this has 1.5 kilogram mass. And it's heading south. Let's say that this is south right here. And it's heading south at five meters per second. And it's gonna run into another cart. And, and cart B is a two kilogram cart. Let's get that in black here, two kilogram cart. And it is moving in the opposite direction with a 
speed or a velocity of six meters per second. Okay, and somewhere in here, they're gonna bang into each other. Somewhere in here, they're gonna bang into each other. And then what happens after they bang into each other? Well, the key thing here is that, oh, I got collision written there twice. We have elastic collision. So they don't stick together, okay? Uh, the heavier car bounces back. So here we are. What's happening after the collision? The heavier car is bouncing back. I want to know what's going on with this car here. Okay. Now let's make some assumptions. We didn't, you know, lose any mass during this, this collision here. Okay. And we know that it's moving back and it's got a new velocity or new speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. So what direction is this car heading and, and how fast is it traveling? That's what we need to find out. Okay. So anytime you have one of these questions, simply start by finding the momentum before the collision. So let's say the momentum, I don't like to use the red for that. Let's go to the blue. Momentum of car A before the collision would be the mass of A times the speed or the velocity of A. So the mass was 1.5 kilograms and its speed was 5 meters per second. So you multiply that together, we're going to get 7.5 kilogram meters per second. Before the collision, the momentum of B, once again, it's the mass of B times the velocity of B. And the mass here was two kilograms and it was moving at a speed or a velocity of six meters per second they're heading in the opposite direction and this is going to have a momentum of 12 kilogram meters per second so just prior to the collision the total momentum so this one this one's going this way and this one's going to go this way to get the total oops total momentum we're going to subtract so we're just going to say hey this has a total of 12 kilogram meters per second take away 7.5 kilogram meters per second and i'm going to see that my total um, amount of momentum is 4.5 kilogram meters per second in that direction okay so now we're gonna have our collision. There it is. They bang into each other. And what do we know? Well, what we know first of all is that our total momentum after the collision is equal to 4.5 kilogram meters per second in that direction. Okay? That's the conservation law. What we had before is equal to what we had after. Okay, so that's the same. So all we need to do now is figure out the momentum of each of the cars and we're all done. Now remember, when they're going in opposite directions, we're subtracting. And what we notice here is that, hmm, maybe it's going to go in the opposite direction. Okay, let's figure this out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say the momentum of car A after the collision is equal to the momentum, oops, equal to the momentum of A after the collision is equal to the mass of A after the collision times, not add, times, boy, that didn't want to come out of there. There we go. Times the velocity of A after the collision. Okay. Well, we know the mass of A, let's take that out of there. We know the mass of A hasn't changed. It's still 1.5 kilograms, but we don't know the velocity of A. And that's what the problem had asked to find out. Okay. We know that the momentum of B after the collision is the mass of B after the collision times the velocity of B after the collision. So what do we do here? Well, I can find this. I know that this had a mass of two kilograms. I added an extra zero there. Let's take that away. We have two kilograms times 0 
meters per second. So this has a momentum of one kilogram meters per second in that direction. Hmm. We know that A and B, when they're combined, have to have a total of four and a half to the left. And right now, I've got a momentum to the right of one. So what I can figure out from this, if I combine these, I know that the momentum of A after the collision must be equal to 5.5 kilogram meters per second in that direction, okay? So if that's the case, I know that 5.5 kilogram meters per second equals 1.5 kilograms times the velocity. So I take my 5.5, divide it by my 1.5 kilograms, and I have the velocity of the car after the collision. VA after the collision is 3.66666666 meters per second. In that direction, what did we have at the start here? Initially, it was moving south, so now it's going to be moving north. 